Hi, I'm Rob Garbas. And I'm Tom Breckney. We're from the Nix marketing team, and we'd like to welcome you to the Nix 2.6 release overview. This is the first video in a series of Nix release notes videos. I hope you will find this visual walkthrough informative and worth your time. Uh, as always, feedback is more than appreciated, either via the comments below or by contacting the Nix marketing team on Matrix. Overall, Nix 2.6 is an incremental release of the Nix package manager. This includes some bug fixes and small additions to the core feature set, as well as improvements and continued development of exciting upcoming experimental features. Nix has moved to a six week release cycle and we feel it would help to announce relevant changes. The release notes are available at nixos.org. Some of the changes are technical while some are user facing. We'd like to present those to you. Let's start with the first feature. Rook? Let's start. A highlight of this release is a new built-in function called built-ins zip adders width, with a, which, is, which has the same functionality as uh, the corresponding function in Nix packages under the same name. But this one is much more efficient. Let me show you uh, about which function I'm talking about. So we can see on our well, built-ins, zip address. And you can see it's a function uh, that accepts as a, uh, a function as a first parameter with two uh, arguments and returns uh, yeah, a list of uh, attribute sets. Um, so this is now done much more efficiently. And this function is used for some critical portions of Nix packages evaluation and is and was identified as a bottleneck for performance by, hope I don't butcher his name, but Penai. In short, Nix evaluation uh, of Nix packages is now 11 to 17% faster in Nix 2.6 compared to 2.5. You don't have to take my word for it. The comparison was actually done by Zimba TM, uh, and you can read his blog. You will find the links to uh, all the links we're showing uh, in the description of the video. Uh, it's also worth to mention that Nix Packages Unstable channel uh, already received an, um, an update uh, earlier this year to take the advantage of this optimization, but only if Nix 2.6 is used. So it kind of works. Uh, with all the Nix releases. Okay, thank you. Uh, the, another uh, update is to the Nix Toml parser. Um, this built-in uh, has been around for some time, but it's now been replaced by a more compliant one. Uh, thanks to uh, Nicholas Matia for ensuring we can correctly parse heterogeneous arrays and produce better error messages. Uh, also note, uh, we can have better uh, error messages that are a bit more colorful and kind of point out a little bit about like where the error occurred, uh, making it easier to debug problems. Um, the similar error on the other side you can see is uh, not as expressive about where the error occurred, making it a little bit more difficult in larger complex projects to figure out exactly where your mistake or typo um, was in. So again, uh, thank you very much to uh, Nicola. Yeah, and error nice error messages are nice. Um, the next uh, change that landed was um, a, usual, a usual case when working with Nix langu language is often that we use Nix REPL to debug or explore the Nix code. Uh, and with 2.6, uh, we now have a chance to um, uh, to able uh, to, uh, how do you say it? Yeah, to able uh, trace report uh, in our Nix REPL. This is done by ablinink. This will now show the traces and you can toggle it back or kind of use the full um, name, show trace, and now it will not show. So let's show an example of this. So I'm going to import the Nix packages uh, 
And an example of an error that is, that is being thrown and we are uh, looking where this error is coming, it, for example, let's say lip survey. Uh, so it throws, a, throws an error and we are not exactly sure why and how uh, this error got uh, here. In this case, uh, we can able uh, straight, uh, traces, error traces. I'm gonna just for the and running it again, you will see it shows us all the uh, trace error traces uh, of the error being raised. Okay, thank you. Uh, so next up, we have um, the uh, Nix. Uh, copy logs. So uh, Nix has powerful features to copy closures between machines and binary caches. Uh, we can also take build plans. You know, we call them derivations. We could push these around to do interesting uh, deployment options, such as uh, pushing a build plan, building somewhere else, copying things back and forth. Uh, but missing from this was the similar ability for logs. So now we have the added capability to copy logs between stores. Uh, we expect this to be used primarily in CI systems to obtain and collect logs from build servers and also as a general utility uh, during debugging or trying to solve a problem. Uh, so to make this uh, feature work, um, I'm going to uh, enable some options uh, in, to, in our nix.conf. And uh, if we could make this full screen, um, that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. and they get into a bash. So we're gonna enable um, Nix command and flakes uh, just to get this example working. Uh, this should work without flakes as well. Um, it just makes this a uh, very simple example to describe. So the we, what we wanna do is we wanna copy uh, the log, the build log for the hello package um, and get this from the cache uh, for nixos.org. Uh, because let's say it's something interesting what I'm going to look into or we're going to have this locally. Uh, and so this uh, new nix store copy log command uh, should make this uh, relatively easy to do. Uh, while we're waiting on that to occur, uh, there we go. We'll go take a look at where it shows up and we should see, there it is. Our hello logs uh, have then showed up. The help for this is going to be in Nix store copy log. And we'll just take a look at some of the documentation about how to use this thing. Um, using this with an eval store is uh, generally helpful if you're going to get something from a binary cache. Uh, but you can also push back and forth between SSH enabled um, uh, remote machines. Um, so good luck with this feature. Yeah. Um, and let's keep the pace. Um, so the next feature, uh, what landed uh, in 2.6 was that Nix command line can now be used anywhere in your uh, folder structure of your, of your project. Uh, you can build uh, or test or run any Nix commands uh, in your project from anywhere. Uh, this is similar uh, to the behavior uh, that you are used to from Git. Um, and let me show you an example. So we, we already abled the Nix command and flakes uh, experimental features as shown um, here. Uh, I'm not going to do this again, but uh, for this purpose, we're going to create a new um, uh, project. Mm. Let's say bash hello. Uh, and let's call it a project. Okay, so this created a project. Uh, we can see it it's only has a flake nix inside uh, with a corresponding lock. Um, now, if we build it, uh, you will see uh, it works as before. But uh, what also enables us is, okay, let's wait for this to be built. And in a few minutes, yeah. But it will, uh, after we will build it, uh, our build command. So you can see it built. Uh, but now let's create a subdirectory, move to it, and I'll run the same thing. Uh, there we go. 
it ran so if i remove from the the result from before it just notified us that uh this is not does not contain the flake nix and it's searching up the uh the folder chain uh and that's this is this feature tom so the next feature is uh it's only applicable in certain scenarios but it can come in handy um so the commit lock option, uh, lock file option for Nix update uh, right now makes a git commit for you after updating a lock file. Uh, when you're, this is an automation or, you know, scripted workflow, uh, this can be handy. Um, the error, the message that gets put into your git log uh, is, has a, there's a default one. And if you want to customize what that default is, the new addition is what can help you here. Uh, it is called a commit lock file summary. It can be set to a non-empty string. Uh, so let's kind of give this uh, an experiment. So let's make a project. Okay, so we have some sort of a project. Uh, let's say we have uh, uh, a flake doc, uh, flake dot nix in here, and let's give us a, a simple commit. Uh, so at this point, uh, if someone wants to uh, do some work with um, updating the, the flake, uh, the question is, you know, I'll do this automatically and they want to give it some sort of a custom message. Uh, so they're going to run a flake update call. They're going to say they want to commit that lock file and they want to give this thing some sort of a, a better summary than what you have by default. Okay. Uh, and let's go take a look at the Git log. And it looks like we now have a uh, custom message in our uh, in our commit. Uh, this could be useful. Sometimes there are uh, workflows that are triggered by uh, what the message might be. And so we see that as one possible usage of this feature. Thank you. Uh, to you, Rock. Yeah, as the last feature, um, you probably already know uh, that Nick's Docker image was re-implemented with uh, Nick's version 2.4. It is now based on Alpine. It, it used to be based on uh, Alpine image, uh, but it's not anymore. It, we now use Nix to build the Nix Docker image from scratch. Uh, with 2.6 release, we are also now pushing all the latest versions of, uh, of from the master branch. And let's see what's happening in the master branch. So we will exit. Uh, we will actually exit, and I'm actually going to show you that we were all the time running inside the Docker image already. Uh, and to kind of make it even more interesting, you can also see the, the REPL from previous image. Uh, uh, here, we, uh, we can also exit it, and you will see we were running the Docker image for 251. This is an easy way how you can actually experiment and test um, different Nix versions. Uh, especially if you encounter some problems. So uh, in this case, um, let's run the latest from the master. It is as easy as running uh, uh, the master command. It's going to take some time uh, because we I just cleaned up my cache. Uh, but I think this will be a very useful feature. OK, uh, thank you. Um... And uh, with that, uh, those are kind of a, a quick whirlwind tour of some of the features that are specific to the uh, Nix 2.6 release. And we expect to have similar sorts of uh, run-throughs of uh, features uh, as they come off um, you know, the pipeline. Uh, right now, we're looking at a, a six-week release cycle. Um, so every six weeks, we should see um, you know, new releases, new features, um, you know, more work, and uh, this puts the community to a good sort of cadence uh, with which to kind of adopt, explore, and start to utilize um, some of these things. Now it's never been better time to actually start contributing to Nix. Uh, it's because of the cadence, I think you will see your work being released uh, in a timely manner. And now that the image is done, we can already check this is uh, the latest development version, which is 2.7. And happy hacking. Yeah.